Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for the second part of this week's update where we're going to take a look at how things have been going with the, uh, the more advanced module production. So in the last episode I talked about how I've got this area out on the end of my um, out on the end of the space station up in Norbit where we're make, starting to try and make all of the more advanced modules. So along here we've got uh, speed 4, uh, speed 4, 5, 6, 7 and eventually 8 and then potentially even 9 on the end of it over there and the same here with efficiency and productivity modules and all of these work in more or less the same way. There are there are subtle differences, but they basically work in, in essentially the same way, where for each one, Tier 4 will require a couple of the Tier 3 modules, as you'd expect, lots of one of the intermediate um, exotic resources, in this case the Iridium plate, and then a machine learning data. So I've stuck in a one, one computer down here at the bottom that is producing these uh, machine learning data at, um, at a, a rate. It's not a particularly good rate, but at the moment we aren't really able to make the modules anyway because they're all missing something else. So I've, uh, I've put this in here, and after much waiting and, um, and grumbling, we have eventually managed to get the, uh, the the data cards coming in here. So it is sort of kind of working. Things are coming together gradually. But yes, up here. So as I say, they all they all have basically the same 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 sort of idea. So the first the first tier, the tier four of each one, requires tier threes. Uh, typically, the plates or whatever the equivalent would be for. Um, for, for the for the for the Vitamalange. we'll have a look at that in a moment, and then the and, and also the machine learning data and speed modules are very much uh, material based. So they get Iridium girders and uh, Material Catalog One. Then it be Iridium, presumably the the uh, bearings and Material Catalog Two. Then Material Catalog Three and the bulkheads, they're not called bulkheads, whatever those things are, and then the heavy assemblies over here with with number four. And so we, I've been able to bring in all of the catalogues very, very easily by just stealing the train that you normally would take them all to the uh, to the science area. So if we look all the way over here in the um, where the material catalogues are coming from, these are all being made by by the system, and uh, yes, I've pulled a load through, and so we're catching, well, there's a bit of catching up required over here, and looking at this, we do seem to have run out of quite a lot of these things. However, I believe, yes, that's because we've run out of the data cards, and I'll talk about that a bit more later on. But I've been able to pull through a huge number of these uh, catalogues, so and, and there's actually still a lot left. There's, there's massive buffers available here, so this is done really, really well. Um, so I've, I've basically sent, pulled this train from here, it's come over here and it's dropped off all of the catalogues here in, in, into this system. Um, and we've got, well, we've, we've churned through quite a lot of them. There's still more than 100 of each one left, but I think we're probably ready to have another train come out here anyway. And um, uh, no, no, not, not yet. We're, we would like to have, a few, we're okay for now. We'd like to get, get the numbers a little bit lower first. And then those are all being fed through. And because each of the uh, each stage requires uh, two inputs plus the previous tier of module, I've been able to do it with the with the uh, the belts like this. And we've got a fairly simple bus system going on here, which is, to be honest, quite over spec for what I needed. So down here, we've got the train coming up from the ground is bringing up all of the uh, all of the iridium intermediates. I was going to have it bring up all the holmium intermediates and maybe uh, as well, but then we realised that actually I'm going to need the uh, quantum processors as well. So I might as well steal Tristan's train that's already doing basically that. And so that that's working quite nicely along here. Here. and in theory all of this should be okay but the problem was as we saw earlier we still don't have we still have a bit of a shortage of these tier 3 modules down on the ground we're gonna have a look at that in a minute but it once that gets up and running and once we've got a lot lots of the intermediates coming through then this should start to flow and then the, and then the machine learning data down here will be the will be the main um, limiting factor and I'll need to extend this put some put some modules in put some speed modules in and uh, maybe um, may, maybe a beacon as well to get this to run a lot faster and once that's running well and then we've got the Iridium coming in, then I should be able to start making all of these modules at least a few stages through. And I've programmed all of these to, to run up until they, until they produce 50 modules, and then to only run the next one when there's at least five in, in the chest. So we, I should have at least a bit of a, a little bit of a limiting factor, a li limit on, on, on the amount that's produced. I may decide that it's worth only actually producing up to maybe six for now. So I'll go through and rotate some of these inserters so we only get up to tier six, because at the moment, Making tier 7 modules feels, well, at the moment we certainly can't afford it. Uh, we don't have enough of the, the various Iridium products coming through in order to get that. Um, and so I probably won't do that. That said though, that means that bringing all of these catalogues over here was a bit wasteful. But um, n never mind, we do have a, a decent amount of resources available. So I think just pausing it like this is probably not going to be too severe. We just need to get the earlier stages working because I need the tier sixes for making the uh, material fabricator mach machines. Then up here, I have a similar system running with the uh, for the efficiency modules. The problem here appears to be holmium, um, and again, well, this one requires 90 holmium plates. So it's not quite as expensive, but it's still rather a lot. Um, and yeah, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of holmium available here. I do have, in theory, a train 
I've hijacked Tristan's um, Holmium supplies train. This is the one that's supposed to go down to Norvis, pick up ingots, cables, and solenoids, then come up to Norbit, pick up the quantum processors, and bring them over here. But as you saw in the previous video, we're not currently making the quantum processors in any, any sort of decent number, which means that the train is probably... Uh, it's probably either stuck waiting for well, yes waiting there it is it's stuck at quantum processor pickup because there aren't any quantum processors for it to pick up so it's not bringing the, um, the the earlier stages here which is a bit unfortunate and this is sort of makes me rather tempted to step back and actually use a um, use the train that's coming up th this train down here for bringing up the basic holmium supplies um, because I don't actually need the quantum processors because we've got at least not yet because we've got the holmium plates going into the tier 4 we've got the cables going into tier 5 and we've got the solenoids going into tier 6 so if I say well for now I only actually need up to tier 6 I could just turn this one around like that and say that's fine we don't need we don't need the quantum processors yet and so if I bring all the other bits and pieces up then we could I could merge them in on the buses up on the bus up here somehow um, and then bring in bring in the holmium uh, ingots and this will probably actually be fine it, the, the, with with the Iridium, I think there is a shortage of Iridium down on Norvis, which might be why we're not getting these. Or it might be that the train hasn't filled up sufficiently to bring all these things up. I, I'm not sure. We'll have to have a look at that. But this one is just the Holmium ingots, and we definitely have, well, at least I'm pretty sure we have those. So it would be nice to get those in and get the efficiency modules running, um, even without, even if we can't do the quantum processors for the tier 7s, because we don't need to do tier 7 just yet. Similarly, the productivity modules, they, they work in very much the same way, but here we need um, the Vitamalange extract, and it takes 120 of those, um, and then the Vitamal and then the bio scrubbers. Vitamin reagent, Vitalic reagent, Vitalic epoxy, and goodness knows what we need for the even higher tiers. Um, and these are the ones that I suspect, other than making the machines, these are probably going to be the ones that are going to be in the highest demand because productivity modules actually get you all that extra free stuff, and we like free stuff. So it'd be nice to get, it'd be nice to start using tier six productivity modules all over the place because uh, at the moment we don't have, we haven't gone that far even in the science labs. The science labs are currently on tier five, yes, tier five at the moment. So this system over here, when we can get it up and running. If we can get up to tier six for machines in general, and maybe tier seven for the um, for the science labs, where which only requires epoxy, which we've, we've kind of got, then that'll be fantastic. We'll be able to get that up and running. But that relies on um, Mark's uh, system for bringing all the all the Vitamin products over wherever that is over here. Uh, which, as as you as you saw in the previous video, it's 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 he's going in the right direction, but it's certainly not finished yet. There's still quite a lot of stuff that needs to be done before we'll have that supply available so some progress has been made but at the moment it's a little bit um, it's, it's not quite there yet in order to get these trains doing what I wanted them to do I've had to do a little bit of reprogramming of them so if we go and find the this train over here so the material science catalog train for example um, now instead of it, previously these trains would head over to here wait until they were full and then head over to the science park and then they would sit here unloading until this system over here said okay well there's there's a short you've run out of one of the uh, one of the catalogs go off and get some more and that worked absolutely fine when they were t when there was one pickup and one drop off station that was that was great I, I, was, I was happy with that design but now that we need more things I'm telling it to depart the drop off stations when it has a second of inactivity so as soon as there's as soon as it stops unloading it's time for it to leave and go off to get to, to reload over here and then go back to a, a, another material catalog station when one is available now at the moment one isn't available that's why we're getting destination full coming off the train over here and that's because over here I've also reprogrammed these these stations instead of watching what's in the train and sending the train away when it gets down to um, when, when we run, when it runs out of one of the packs instead we're now over here we are subtracting 300 from each of the um, each of the different types of catalogs so when one of these drops below 300 we can pass a less a number less than zero over to here it'll output then it'll output a single L and that'll turn this station on so instead of having it watch the train and then dispatch the train when the train runs out of something now instead it watches these warehouses and when one and when the warehouses get low of one of the one of the types of catalog, and it doesn't matter which one, then it'll call a train over. So it's been a, a bit of a change there, but the system will work quite nicely in this this way instead. Um, and it means it means we can have multiple drop off stations, and that's and given that we now need the the catalogs for all kinds of other things for making the modules, this is quite a useful way to uh, to change it. Similarly, I've had to fiddle with some of the trains that are bringing the um, the the exotic materials, the intermediates around. So particularly for the for the bio the bio ones. 
I've sort of, I've sort of fiddled with it a bit, but I'm not convinced it's fully working. But it is now sending out it's sending out requests for all the things it needs onto the onto the network up here. So we've got uh, again once again we've got the negative numbers of about 200 of each of the things we would like to get over here, um, and then we're passing through if there are. Any of and for any of any of those that are negative, we will then pass through a one one of that signal to here. This will go to the station, and if this station sees anything equals one, then it'll activate. It then goes through another arithmetic combinator, and this one I believe just adds zero onto any numbers that are going through. And this is to isolate it from the network over here, because as you can see, there's already one of several of the Vita products over here, and so I want to make sure that that doesn't get fed back into the station and trigger it at the wrong time. So we've got this as a buffer, and then we're feeding those out onto the network here. And in theory, that means marks system at the other end when the, the, when the input connection over here sees one or more of any of these any any of these resources so for example the uh, this this one here when it whenever it sees more than one vitamin lange extract it will then output a signal of one vitamin lange extract that then gets passed around to here and tells these inserters then to try and load that into the into the train. So the train will turn up, it'll be loaded with all of the Vita things that somewhere on the network wants. Then it'll be dispatched to go to a Vita stuff drop-off station. Hopefully, that Vita drop-off station will be the one that is asking for those things, or at least is, it needs those things in a reasonable quantity, because they'll then get, if, if so, they will then get unloaded there, and the train will then come back around, fill up with all the bit different Vita things that are needed, and then go off to another station. Potentially the same station if it still needs stuff, potentially a different station if the first one is full. The problem, a potential problem I can see with this system is if we have one station that's requesting, say, core chunks, and the other one is, and, the, and then another one that's further away that's requesting all of the other things, and then we could end up in the system in, in a situation where we're trying to, where we're loading everything into the train except core chunks. Then the train goes off to the core chunk state, a uh, drop-off station, with without any core chunks, just with all the other stuff, and then comes back again and then picks up done nothing because it's still full and could end up in an eternal loop like that. That is a possible failure state for this. Um, I'm not saying it's going to happen because we will see how it goes, we'll see, see how the system runs, but I can see it being a possible, a possible risk factor. The energy train works in a similar way. You put a request onto the onto the onto the network over here, but this one only needs a request for um, a for, for a quantum circuit. So when you put a, when you put a quantum circuit onto there, it will then dispatch the train to bring you all of the holmium stuff, including quantum circuits. Um, this is slightly less flexible, but it's also slightly simpler. As I was saying earlier, the problem with this system is that the train goes down to Nor down to Norvis, picks up all of the holmium most of the holmium intermediates, then comes up here, then stops here and waits to get a full supply of um, of, of quantum computer of, of quantum processors and then goes off to wherever and this is problematic I mean I, I can dispatch the train from here but there's a fairly high chance that it'll go to the wrong place it might maybe it'll, uh, it'll go to the wrong quantum processor drop it'll I, I don't know it whatever it is it, it isn't it isn't currently working we're not getting the holmium intermediates through over here which is why as I say I'm, I'm considering doing it in a slightly different way then down here, this one is the system that I've designed, and so it works in the third way, a completely different way, and this is using the re sending requests down to Norvis, the stuff gets loaded into a train down on Norvis, the train comes up and unloads whatever, and, and, and unloads everything here into this system. Uh, this doesn't seem to be really working either, let's go and have a look at why that one's stopped. Here we go, so over here, we presumably, yes, we just straight, we, we just haven't filled the train up, so the train's got to the point where it's... Um, it's got a load, of, a load of stuff in it, but it's not ready to go because it hasn't filled up. If I dispatch it manually, like that, then we can send it up, 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 up top, and it can do some unloading up there. And we can maybe then see it, see the uh, system up there making perhaps one or two modules. We'll see how it goes. And here it is, and it can unload. And this might be an opportunity for me to use the system I was talking about yesterday, where I monitor all of the things in the warehouses over here, and if any of them have got down to sort of. And if any of them have actually run out, then I request the train to be dispatched anyway, even if we don't actually, need, even if it isn't completely full. That would be very doable. Um, I just haven't really thought it through yet because I only thought of this when I was recording the last video. But now you can see we've got a nice supply of the um, of, of, of the girders and a, a few of the bearings coming through. So there's been some uh, a little bit of improvement on the, on the supplies up here. We've also got some more of the early, um, tier three modules coming through, although still no speed uh, speed modules, which means we're not going to be making anything along here, no matter how many of these things we bring in. Um, up here, have we? No, we won't have any holmium either. So no, we're actually we're still not going to be able to make anything. Unfortunately, we will need to br need to bring some holmium over here in order to do that. And unfortunately, that's just straight up not going to happen. We have had a little bit to arrive apparently because we've made 44 efficiency module fours, and some of those have been put into four of those have been put into here. So we've made 48 of them in fact. Um, 
but we're then missing the uh, missing the catalogs over here because the energy system isn't building the catalogs fast enough. So you can see these problems are just sort of pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. So as I noted, all of these things are being brought up, except the, the ones I've just, I, I sort of changed my mind about being the, the Holmium Intermediates here, which I think I'm going to change my mind back again and get those being brought up. Um, but yes, we still don't have any of the, uh, the, blue, the blue speed modules being brought in here because there's a shortage of those. I did do what I was talking about last week, and I've brought, I'm now bringing in the modules to a set of train stations down here um, because it means there's a, that, that way we end up with a lot fewer of them on ridiculously long belts that run all the way from here all the way up 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 here up here up here up here and i've there are still a few modules yeah there's still quite a lot of um, productivity modules on here i haven't got rid of them all yet but down here it is prioritized to take the ones off this belt first and so eventually we'll start we'll we'll, we'll, ev we'll eventually empty this belt and then we can start using these ones and i can come in and tidy these belts up a little bit but for now uh yes we're still using these ones because the productivity modules were the ones that were being made in decent quantities so up in in the old module city, we can see yes, we've got the we've got the construction of all of the modules happening over here. We've got you've, you've seen that up in space. We've got at least some efficiency modules, and there's mm, eleven stacks in there. That's not that's about a quarter of a train. Um, Eighteen stacks in here, nearly nearly half a train, and thirty two. So three quarter. There is three quarters of a train's worth in here, and the they are dribbling through at a very very slow rate. And the reason we're getting these through quite so slowly. Is because making the uh, these tight uh, speed modules requires a steady supply of imosite crystals, and we're just not getting those. Occasionally, we'll chuck in some from somewhere, but there's, that that is problematic at the moment. Um, and there are, and so that that's limiting the rate we can make this at. As I was saying uh, last week, I still need to upgrade all of these machines to tier three pro uh, assembly machines. Maybe put in. I can't put in productivity modules. I could put in speed modules. I don't know if that'd be a good idea because I feel like. Part, a large part of the problem is the rate of the supply, the rate of the inputs of the supply, rather than the uh, the speed the machines run at. But you know, it make things run a little bit better. I can't put productivity modules in them because you can't productivity module um, module construction. It only allows you to use speed or efficiency modules, which is a shame. But I can sort of see why. So yes, the problem is the imosite, which is, should be being brought into this station here, and in order to be, be brought into that station there, it should be being dropped off here by a train that comes down from space, and in order for that to happen, it needs to be brought up from Taras, and oh, it looks like we actually do have some stuff over here, because Tristan has been out fixing up Taras, and before we, we, had, a, we had problems where Taras was requesting... Um, we, we, we theoretically were asking for stuff to be brought from Taras, but it it wasn't working for various reasons. And top of the list was just that there wasn't anything really controlling what went where, and so all the warehouses were jamming up. And so Tristan's been in here; he's improved the uh, the belt system and the way it's the way it unloads. It's still it, it's still weird, but it should be a functional weird now, and we'll eventually pass up all of the the emosite crystals and plates all the way up here into this warehouse. And there there is a train, uh, so maybe this train has has um. So it looks like yes, the train has been down to Norvis enough times unloading here in, that we've now actually got a train's worth of um of of the, of the, uh, the plates. And so they're now a plate. A trains come to pick up all the plates, which is great. I mean, those those are definitely needed. I think they're going off to be made made into all the beryllium intermediates, which um, have 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 stalled because of the well the lack of these plates. Um, the crystals, on the other hand, uh, yeah, we don't have very many of those. But it could just be it could be because a train has just gone with them. Um, let's have a, another look up here. So yes, there we go. A train has finally arrived with some imosite crystals. So so it looks like we might have. I'm not going to say we have solved the problem. But it does look like things are actually starting to run a bit now. So we're going to have the yeah the imosite can flow through here. We can start to make these speed modules, and that means we can then ship them up to orbit, and we can start actually making them into the uh, into into the, into the higher tier modules that we need for everything else that's trying to trying to be done. So yeah, that's that's optimistic. That's prom that's very promising. It looks like that things might be starting to go in the um, starting starting to go a bit better. Thank now that Tristan has uh, has gone in and stared at that system and going, what on earth is going on here? And then hit it with a hammer until it starts actually working properly. So <laughs> that's very much appreciated. I'm glad that's now going. Um, he still thinks the uh, the request system that Mike threw together is a, is a bit weird and he doesn't entirely approve of it. Um, I, I would agree with him there. Uh, I think what he probably needs to do is have a look at what Mark has been doing with the um, with the biological stuff and maybe implement something similar. It's going to be a bit of a headache to do and a bit a bit sort of a bit complicated, but I think it'll be very worth it and we'll get this whole system working and we'll get the MSI working in a in a more reliable way. And to be fair, it is it is quite a bit more complicated bringing two different, completely different materials over from a pla from a planet, and then keeping the system balanced. So um, yeah, I'm I'm glad that's sort of up and working properly.
and over on Terra as well, you can see the whole system has ground to a halt, particularly making the plates, and that's due to a shortage of rare metals. Uh, we were requesting a, a quantity of rare metals, something like 40,000 on, on the spaceship when it comes over, and it turns out that wasn't enough, even after it had been increased to, for, to the 40,000 from the, um, I think it was at 20,000 before. So this is going to need another another nudge, another increase, um, and it's, I think it's had that, so it should bring over, when it flies back over again next time, it should bring 60,000 with it. We'll probably need to manually poke the train in order to get it to go up to the uh, up, to, up to orbit here and pick up the uh, the, the uh, rare metals when they're brought in but it's getting there we, we should now have a have a functioning system and if we look at the map maybe we'll see the uh, the ship on its way out that's Kothar no it doesn't seem to be on its way but at some point we'll hopefully get all of this stuff up and running and it'll be a bit more uh, a bit more reliable I mentioned the data cards earlier, uh, mostly because we'd run out of them completely for uh, for the material science and probably a few other places as well. Um, and then we've, been, we've had a couple of um, of things that have improved that. So we have now finally got some through to here, so I can I can start making the um, the machine learning data. So that is allowing us to, in theory, make the make the uh, modules. It's not in practice because we're missing all the other things. But at least that particular step of it here is is now working. Um, but we've had a couple of a couple of improvements to make them come through a bit more uh, a bit more quickly and a bit more uh, make the supply a bit more uh, reliable. The first and smaller of those two is that Tristan has upgraded the um, memory card formatting systems over here, or at least has, has started upgrading the memory formatting systems over here. So instead of using the tier one supercomputers and the um, and the basic recipe. Which is this one? As you see, you can do it in absolutely any any of the machines. It takes in one data card. You've got a seventy percent chance of getting it back, and a thirty well, a twenty nine percent chance of just getting some scrap out, which you then need to recycle, and you lose the card. So with the with the tier two supercomputers, we can upgrade to this one, which gives you an eighty percent chance of getting the card back. So that's I mean, that's basically that's all, that's a more than ten percent improvement on the number of cards you get out. It's gone from seventy to eighty. Or it's an improvement of, of getting of managing to sort out another third of the broken data cards into into good data cards. So that's definitely going to help. Um, I guess you could look at it as we're losing uh, 50, we're losing a third less of the data cards that come through. So that that should make quite a big difference, and I suspect it is. Um, However, because we're also expanding the uh, the areas out, we still need to put a lot more data cards into the system, even if we're doing better at recycling them. And we also lose quite a lot of data cards into the system as well, because quite a lot of them get will get turned into catalogues, that will eventually get turned into science packs and disappear in, into the science labs. Some of them will be turned into modules, some of them will be turned into catalogues, which then just sit on the belts over here, so we've got more, more buffer over here that now needs to be refilled. So we still need to have a lot more of the blank data cards being made. And the problem generally with those has been, well, we, we had that problem with the red circuits a while back, but that's been fixed for long enough now that I don't think we can blame that anymore. It's now definitely down to the substrates. And so the problem was that in, previously, we had a fairly small system over here making the data card substrates and feeding them out onto onto a, onto a belt, then went down all the way down here, um, and then ran all the way down the length of the bus, and down here eventually in, in eventually into a train down eventually into a train down here so we've made some improvements to that now instead of running all the way down instead of running all the way down the bus and being a single blue belt I've adapted it to load into a train here so this, this is this is in, in, in the area where we're making the cards so we now we now have a train pulls in here we'll load up from this warehouse and then we'll go off and we can take a sort of a train load over at a time instead of a single belt at run, running and so that makes this far far more effective we get m a much much higher quantity of, um, of, of, of the data substrates being transferred through but in order to keep up with that I've got rid of the really old data substrate production system that was up here before and replaced it with um, 18 <laughs> tier 4 assembly machines and a, and a really really fast uh, wide area beacon in the middle and so this is now capable of producing it, it can't quite fill these three belts with, um, with with output but it's more than enough to keep this train busy the problem that we now have is that down here this is now being fed into the train on a different system uh, we're chucking that into into the train we've got the usual things here what monitoring the uh, monitoring the belts to, to, to turn them on and off as and when we need the uh, the uh, substrates but we've got so much other stuff uh, uh, but but I I haven't put in a, a thing like this that watches the belts to see when they're full to dispatch the train when it gets to when it gets to basically full. So at the moment we've got this train is essentially it's full, but there's still room for another 35 batteries and four copper ingots, and we haven't filled up these pieces of belt here, so it's not dispatching the train, so it's just broken. And yeah, this is frustrating. So I think I need to put in a thing on this to trigger this train to go at some point, maybe when there's more than uh, three and a half thousand. Um, maybe when there's more than 7,000 substrates uh, in there and the, tra and, and the train is in inactive or something like that. I need to do something to trigger this train to go even when it's just sitting, even when it isn't actually strictly full and when these aren't complete. Oh, 
Now, oh, of course, because the train's gone now, we're getting a load more stuff flooding through because, because we haven't got a, a clever um, uh, memory cell system like the one Mark was using. But, yeah, so the, the, the problem is that the, the train won't go until it's either completely full or these belts are completely full. And so it, is, it isn't working. Some further, further work is required there. Other than that, this system is essentially working. Uh, we did run out of silicon at one point, so I discovered that it wasn't a problem with production of silicon. It seemed to be a logistic problem, like the, uh, the, were, the trains weren't bringing it over fast enough. So I made another silicon train, and now things seem to be absolutely fine. We've got, we've got sufficiency, sufficiency over here. There's 35, 19,000, 55,000, and 38,000 in all these warehouses. So we still don't have a huge amount of silicon, but it's clearly more than whatever we're triggering at, and it's, it, it, it's probably fine. Um, and we're able to, yes, we're able to churn all this stuff out nice and quickly now. And so this brings me on to the uh, the science that's been done to, in the in the last stream, and we've been working on a lot of the sort of the, the biological upgrades. So each time you, each time you do a um, each time you get a new biological cat science pack, you get a set of these upgrades where you can you can upgrade the player essentially. We got intelligence last week because that's the most important one that gets you a, a boost to re research productivity. And then last week we managed to get the constitution, which gets you a bit more health, and we've got the, the agility, which allows you to move a bit quicker. We're still currently working on dexterity, which allows you to um, mine things faster pocket craft faster I think and then we'll do strength uh, which allows you to carry more to be honest personally I think I'd have done those two the other way around because having a bigger inventory I think is probably more useful but never mind uh, but these are all limited by the rate we're able to make biological science packs at uh, so we should possibly be thinking about doing some of the other things that said, we seem to have run out of most of the other exciting stuff we want to do. I mean, we could make efficiency module eights. Uh, we could, uh, that's a biological. We could, none of, I don't think we care about any of any of this stuff really. Uh, we could look into making some extra science packs. We could do more. more um, we could do better projectile damage, but we're not using projectiles. We don't want to do artillery shells shooting uh, and artillery upgrades. So yeah, at this point, actually maybe doing the shield projector would be a good one to do. But no, that requires the um, the A card, the automation tech card as well. Which, or no, the what is an A tech card? The advanced tech cards, which we haven't made yet. So at the moment, we, work, we, we basically need to start working on new types of science. So the advanced tech cards and the matter science pack. And this makes me wonder if I'm working on the wrong one of these, if this, if this would have been an easier one to work on first. And yes, I suspect it probably would have been, but never mind. Uh, I'll do, we'll do, we'll do one thing at a time, get the, uh, the matter science up and running, and then we, can, then we can think about the advanced tech cards. Or maybe we'll give that to somebody else to do. So there hasn't been a huge amount of science this time. Um, there hasn't there hasn't been any, any deaths either. We've done quite well there. Everyone's managed to stay alive because we've all just been hiding out, building science pack, building science systems up, or just upgrading the supply of all the materials that are coming through. So it's not been particularly dangerous this time. And I think yes, that brings us to the end of the video. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. We'll uh, see you again on Thursday for the stream when we're going to be carrying on with all of this, and hopefully I'll get all of those modules up and running and be able to get the matter science um, going. Uh, then on Tuesday I should be doing the traditional XCOM 2 stream. We've got a video coming out on Wednesday. If you if you're a non-supporter, you get to see last week's supporter video, which was a, a video talking about how to make that uh, the nice pretty graph thing that Tristan has on uh, running down on Norvis that shows all of our resources. Um, hopefully you'll find that find that one interesting. And uh, and then of course next. Next weekend there'll be these catch-up videos as usual. So once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on everything else that happens on here. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.